brothers and sisters to the Exodus Musical Fireside for, for 2022. Really glad y'all could make it. My name is Shukameka Chikora. I'll be conducting. President Griffiths is presiding in the audience. Um, we'd like to thank you all for coming out tonight. And our opening hymn will be um, number 136, I Know My Redeemer Lives. Um, and by Evan Wilde from Oregon. And the opening prayer will be by Sage House. <laughs>
Our dear Father in heaven, we're grateful for this day. We're grateful that we could gather together as a stake. As a stake. Please us that we will be able to feel the spirit throughout this meeting. And we're grateful for all those who have spent time preparing and planning for this. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, hello, brothers and sisters. My name is Will Stevens, and I was asked to introduce a song called Fear Not. This song was written for a seminary graduation, but is also combined with the hymn, How Firm a Foundation. Many years ago, N. Eldon Tanner was asked by President Monson about his job as the president of the Trans-Canada Pipeline. President Monson asked Eldon Tanner, Tanner why the roads and highways in Western Canada basically remained intact during their sub-zero frigid winters showing little or no signs of cracking or breaking, while the road surfaces in many areas where winters are less cold and less severe develop cracks and breaks and potholes. He said to President Monson, the answer is in the depth of the base of the pa paving materials. In order for them to remain strong and unbroken, it is necessary to go very deep with the foundation layers. When the, when the foundations are not deep enough, the surfaces cannot withstand the extremes of weather. We live in a time where we have to brave our own storms on a daily basis, and we have been warned by our leaders that these storms will increase in intensity. Have we laid our, have we laid our own foundations deep enough so that we have prepared for these storms? Will we rise up t to meet these storms knowing we have spent the time needed nurturing and building our testimonies? I have a testimony that the Lord will make us all this will give us all the strength we need to fight off the storms of life if we take the time today to make our foundation strong. I know that fear isn't in the Lord's vocabulary. It shouldn't be in ours either. I want to bear my testimony that I know all that is true. I know the um, Savior lives and he died for us on the cross uh, so that we can make it back to God again. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
sisters. Um, today I was asked to talk about um, the song Come Thou Fount, and when I was looking over this song, um, something that really was brought out to me was um, the significance of our hearts in that song. Um, the verse, tune my heart to sing his grace, and here's my heart, O take and seal it, seal it for thy curts above. These lyrics are very strong to my heart. In, as I think of it, I think of it as our hearts are like a very poorly tuned guitar or a guitar with brand new strings. We are tuning our hearts to be like God, who is a perfectly tuned man. This song makes me think of how we must give our hearts to God to help us tune our hearts to be like him. And on this exodus, we need to give our hearts to God with this opportunity. We can further deepen our connection and want to become, um, have our t hearts tuned just like he does. I just like to bear my testimony that I know that Exodus will bless us all and that we will have an amazing time and that we will further grow our testimony upon it. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
live in a world with change all around, but with the prophet's words, we'll stand on solid ground, even though it's still hard. This is the first sign of the song, I will be what I believe. I love this song because it relates to the world the way it is today. We do live in a world with change all around. If we listen to the prophet's words, it will help us stand on solid ground, but it will always be hard. But we can get through it with Heavenly Father's help. He is always there, waiting to help us. We are being taught in our youth to know what is true from beginning to end. Are we going to be like the armies of human and stand up for what we know is right? Are we going to be Lord's missionaries and bring the world his truth? The Savior has promised peace to those who love him and obey him. I know even as hard as life is, our Heavenly Father will be on our side helping us get through it. Heavenly Father loves each and every one of us more than we could ever imagine. He sacrificed his only begotten son for us. I know that if you go to the Lord for help, he'll help you in the best way he knows he can. And I know if you and if you continue to have faith, you'll get through life knowing there's someone always there for you, no matter the mistakes you made. And I say these things to just guys tonight. I wish we could applaud in this room, but we, we can't because that's not reverent. Um, so hi, I'm Rustin Smith. Um, I was asked to give a little kind of thought about a song. Um, I'll go where you want me to go. Um, and as I was kind of, I was studying the lyrics, those are usually a good spot to get messages from. Um, I mean, not in the notes. Um, anyway, so... 
uh, I found that there was a common little, what's the word, like theme of the song. Um, and it's all about trusting in God. And I, I felt like this was kind of perfect for me because I, I had an experience last year that really brought me closer to the Christ. And after, so last year, I'm like just beginning high school. And like in high school, you go from, well, you end up having a lot of stuff on your plate. You're super busy all the time. <laughs> and sometimes things don't necessarily always come together. Um, but as I, I prayed about it, uh, to figure out how much I could actually handle, because I'm the kind of person that does everything because it's fun. Um, and so I prayed about it, and I received the answer that if I would trust God and put him first, I everything would be okay and it would work out. And so I did that. I I put God first in my life. I made him the thing that was motivating me to do things, not, not other things, worldly things. Um, I, I was motivated by Christ. I wanted to be better because of Christ. And things, they, it, it all came together somehow. Chaos became order. That's fun. That's a fun thing to say. Um, so... This song is really meaningful to me because it shows that if I let God guide my life and allow him to forge me into who he needs me to be, whatever happens, it's going to be okay. Death isn't the end, so if I die because I do something stupid, then maybe it'll be okay. Um, don't do stupid things. <laughs> so, yeah, I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. <laughs> so following that testimony is going to be great. <laughs> Lead Kindly Light was a song that I was asked to talk about. And um, when looking through the lyrics, because like Rustin said, that's where you get your messages, um, I realized that this song provides me with comfort and reassurance that Heavenly Father is there for me and that there's a light and no judgment and he's holding out his hand saying, come on, Chaz, it's okay, we can get through this. Um, there's a line in this song and it says, I do not ask thee to see the distant scene, one step enough for me. So I don't know, that kind of just makes me think of having an eternal perspective and maybe not knowing what's four steps ahead, three steps ahead, even two steps ahead, but just that next step that I'm not alone for that, and that Heavenly Father's there to, again, grab my hand and say, hey, it's okay, come on. Um, so connecting this back to Exodus, I'm sure there's going to be lots of times where our feet hurt, or we don't want to walk, or we just want to sit down and eat some food, and that time will come, but we got to take that next step first with our Heavenly Father. So um, I've had the amazing opportunity to help plan this Exodus, and I'm just so excited that we all get to experience it together. So in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
Good evening, brothers and sisters. It's great to see you all here today. My name is Cohen Penrod, and if you look at your outline, I'm probably not on there because Sydney Nichols um, did not was not able to show up, so I'm a replacement. But it's great to be here. <laughs> okay, so the "Upon the Rock" was written by our stakes very own Angie Killian, who's up here on the stand with us today. So shout out to her. Um, but during the past rehearsals. Uh, we were able to hear from Sister Killian and the inspiration that she was able to get um, behind the song. So, her family loves to go down to Lake Powell, and they used the sandy beaches as a place to anchor their houseboat. But one summer, the weather was terrible and the waves were white capping, and the houseboat was shaking um, as the unsolid beach washed away as the waves took it out. Sister Killian's dad, along with her uncles, had to go and get help before things got worse. Luckily, everyone ended up being okay. But the boat was not anchored to a solid foundation, and it was almost moved away. Since that experience, the Killians no longer anchor their boat to the sand, but rather to the rocks, which provide the necessary bounding and immovable foundation, which will allow their boat to hold even in the worst weather possible. We can relate this to our daily lives when we build our testimonies and beliefs on a sandy beach where we will appear fine until the weather gets rough and the waves rip our foundation away, leaving us with nothing. So when a foundation is strong and firm, we will stand our ground even through the toughest of storms. I like to bear my testimony that even when we anchor our spiritual that when we anchor our spiritual foundation through scripture study, attendance in seminary, and regular prayer, we will be untouchable even when the waves of the world try to rip us apart. I say these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
everyone. My name is Colin Torgerson, and I love the outdoors. Whether I'm out hunting, fishing, camping, or whatever, I'm always looking forward to getting back on the mountain. Whenever I'm struggling with things and need a little help, I'm always turning to things like shooting my bow, going fishing for the evening, or going on a hike. These activities not only are things that I like, but I find peace in doing these things. Many of you may feel the same way, but when I'm out in the mountains and away from people in the world, I feel closer to God. <clears throat> it gives me a chance to clear my mind and focus on the more important things. So my challenge for you guys who are going on Exodus is to recognize times when the Savior is with you and try to focus on him just a little bit more. In Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 86, verse 63, it says, Draw near unto me, and I will draw near unto you. Seek me diligently, and ye shall find me. Ask, and, she, and ye shall receive. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. I know that if you, turn your, if you will turn to your Savior whenever you need help, he will be there for you every step of the way. I also believe that if you strive to become closer to our Savior or nearer to our God, we will find him in our lives more often than not. I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
should not be allowed to go last. I've changed what I was going to say like five times now. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to share this quote from a President Monson talk. It's, dare to be a Mormon, dare to sta stand alone, dare to have a purpose firm, dare to make it known. Um, this was in a talk where President Monson was talking about how he was in the army and they were like, hey, you're all going to go to church today. If you're Catholic, go there. If you're Jewish, go there. Like all this. And then it got to the point where he was done like telling people where to go and he was like, well, I'm not Catholic. I'm not Jewish. I'm a Mormon. And he was just standing there and he didn't know anyone else was around him and he was just all there. And um, eventually when the sergeant guy was like, what are you doing? And then there's like three people around him. They're like, oh, well, we're Mormons, sir. And then they went and had their little meeting. And it was just, it's a cool talk because it shows how he had to go through that thing where you feel alone. And um, we have quite a few prophets who have done similar things like that, like Samuel the Lamanite. And when he got up on the wall and they were throwing uh, rocks and arrows and everything at him and he didn't get hit even once and a lot of people think maybe that's luck but I don't think you can get that lucky um, if Samuel the Lamanite didn't have God on his side he would have probably been killed and that seems like something we won't ever have to do we probably won't have to stand on a wall and get things thrown at us but there are examples today, like choosing a modest prom dress when there are so many that aren't, or choosing not to swear when every second at the high school there's bad words, and just things like that. But for me, I have kind of awesome friends, and so I don't have to like stand up to them often. And so it was hard to come up with an example, but then I thought of one that was very relevant to me. I have a friend I work with, and he is really nice and awesome, and he also just isn't a member of the church, and he really doesn't like our church. And there was one night we were cleaning up, and for some reason we started talking about religion. That is a bad idea. Do not talk about religion at work. Um, <laughs> but he um, wanted to tell me a lot of very aggressive opinions about our church. And I was just like kind of stuck because I didn't really know what to do. And I knew if I said anything, he would just like take it and be like, oh, well, you're wrong because of this. And a lot of my testimony is based on very personal stuff, and I wasn't ready to get my feelings hurt. But um, so I didn't really know what to do. And I was just kind of standing there like, well, you're wrong, but I can't argue with you. And um, this other coworker I work with, he was like, dude, I love Jesus, you don't have to, it's fine, let's just talk about something else. And we changed the subject, and we actually had a really great night, and we cleaned up great. Um, but it was hard in that moment, because I didn't like think about anyone else working there, being a uh, member of the church, and it felt really alone. But even when you have feelings like that, God is always with you, if not your coworkers. So... <laughs> I say these things in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ, amen.
heart has been befriended, defended by those who come before, who call to me. Sisters, my name is Asher Valgardson. Uh, I'm really excited for Exodus this year. I'm grateful that we have the opportunity to do this activity and become closer with our friends, God, and with ourselves. If someone were to ask what I want from Exodus this year, I would say I want spiritual experiences to grow my testimony and build a foundation in Jesus Christ and his gospel. Having a foundation in the gospel is a key step to becoming a true and faithful disciple in Christ. In Helaman 5.12, Helaman is teaching his sons, Nephi and Lehi, who are about to go preach to the Lamanites. He says, And now, my sons, remember, remember, that it is upon the rock of our Redeemer, who is Christ, the Son of God, that ye must build your foundation, that when the devil, sh that when the devil shall send forth his mighty winds, yea, his shafts in the whirlwinds, yea, when all his hail and his mighty storm shall beat upon you. It shall have no power over you to drag you down to the gulf of misery and endless woe. Because of the rock upon which ye are built, which is a sure foundation, a foundation whereon if men build, they cannot fall. If we build our testimonies around the foundation of Christ, we surely will not fall. My family has started building a house this year. This has been a very new experience and a source of many object lessons and general life lessons. For example, don't hit yourself in the face with a hammer. <laughs> it kind of hurts. One of the greatest object lessons I have learned from this new house is the power of a sure foundation. When you start building a house, you need to start by digging the hole. I see this as being born and coming into this world. Once the hole is dug, you need to start working on building a strong foundation. The foundation for a house is built of concrete a very strong material that doesn't collapse under pressure. Our spiritual foundation must be the same. They need to be strong, built with the firm testimony of Christ and his gospel. They mustn't collapse under the pressure of the world. Once the foundation is built and it's strong, the real beauty can take place. A beautiful building can start to come from that foundation. I believe that we all have the power to build a sure and firm foundation in Christ and the gospel and that with that firm foundation, 
we can grow to be great sons and daughters of Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So, as this meeting is coming to a close, I'd just like to stand up here and uh, thank the members of the choir and the musicians for all their time and effort that they've put towards uh, this fireside to make it possible. Um, we offer our thanks to the Exodus Music Committee Chairs, Sister Amber Dunford, Brother Steve Dunford, and also Sister Angie Killian. Thank you to Brother and Sister Tyson, who are the Exodus Spiritual Committee Chairs. We also thank uh, Sister Hughes for her help with microphones and recording. Tonight's musical fireside was planned by us, the youth members of the Spiritual Committee and the Exodus Music Committee. Um, we hope that through the music and testimony shared, um, you have felt the Spirit speak truth to you. We look forward to Exodus this summer, and we hope that you will look forward to it as much as we do. We will now conclude with our closing song, hymn number 85, How Firm a Foundation. The congregation will join in on verse 7, and the closing song, the closing prayer will be given by Will Stevens. that has gone into this Exodus musical fireside and thank you for your son and the atonement and please bless all you have a good rest of the Sabbath day and please bless that um, um, that we will have the spirit to be with us and I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ Amen, amen.